because I have taken the position that I'm going to expose Satan and I'm going to expose the demons of hell and I'm going to expose where they came from and I'm going to expose uh, how that they, what they did to our Lord and our God and I'm going to expose them as to what they're trying to do to you today. And I'll tell you, uh, Satan likes to work in the dark. Satan does not want you to recognize who he is. He wants to look like an angel of light to you. He wants to look like a picture of righteousness to you. But he's not. He's wicked. That's why he's a devil. He's an adversary of God. And if we, and if we don't have Christ, that fear of him will grip us and that fear of him will hold us back. Not because he's revealed himself, but because he is working it through the darkness of each and every day of our life. But I have committed myself that I will not fear him, but that I will battle him all the way to the end. And that's what I want to do, is to stay true to him and not fear him in the activities of my life and the things that I try to do for the Lord. I looked at the 23rd Psalm, and I thought of David, and I thought of how that David struggled so much and how that his life was put on the line so many times when Saul was out to kill him, how that when he faced Goliath and how that he always faced so much opposition in his life and how the battles that he had to fight all through his life. And then I think of, of this, uh, this Psalm of David. He said, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. And I, I want to tell you this morning, if you uh, don't want to fear no evil, there's one thing you better make sure of, and that is the Lord is your shepherd. And that's what makes it important. That's what, that, what, that is what gives us victory. That's what helps us through the very difficult times. That's what uh, brings us through when Satan is attacking us and when the demons of hell are trying to make everything in your life uh, go in the wrong direction, when they're trying to defeat you, uh, when, when he's trying to, to, to get you down and get you to give up. That's, that's Satan that's trying to do that. But if you've got the Lord as your shepherd, then he is guiding you, and he will help us to go through this line and uh, not fear no evil because he is with us. And he said, the Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. And I, I believe that I will not want uh, for to find bravery. He will provide bravery for me. I won't have to look for the ability to stand, but he will prop me up and he will stand for me and stand with me and hold me up against the battles of my life. We must be reassured this morning. Our purpose in life is that we're assured that we as a people and that you as a believer this morning, that you can trust Christ that you can trust him as your shepherd. You can say that honestly and not just read it as words. You see, we see that on so many, many bulletins at the funeral home. We see it on people who have not lived for the Lord. But they're looking for comfort. They're trying to find peace. And that they put that on the back of it, and they, that, that is the greatest uh, psalms that, that's on any bulletin in the funeral home today. It's the Lord is my shepherd. You see, I believe that that's the desire of the people when they bury their loved ones. That is their heart's desire, that that person that has deceased, that it was the Lord was their shepherd. And so they do that so that they can be comforted. But we live in a real world. Just because it says it on paper doesn't mean that it's real. Just because we say it and, and put it on a bulletin, it doesn't mean that the Lord is your shepherd. But when you know it from your heart and you live from day to day, trusting him as your shepherd to lead you, to know that I don't have to want for protection. He's there to protect me. I don't have to want for things. He's there to provide for me. He said, I will provide all your needs. 
He's my shepherd. You see, many people can, stood up, can stand up this morning and they can read that psalm and they can read it out loud. And I guarantee you this, the people that can truly claim that the Lord is their shepherd, when they read it, it will sound different than when somebody reads it and it's not their shepherd. When it's just words and when it's not reality. It's got to be reality. And I'm so thankful this morning as I read this that I can say that the Lord is my shepherd. That he is the one who guides me. I can trust in him. And I have put all my trust in him. If you want to go through life and fear no evil, you rest assured of one thing. You must trust Christ with your sins. The sins of man is what is eating at our souls. The sins of men and women and boys and girls, the sins of their life is eating at them. It's, it's eating them alive because they haven't trusted Christ with their sins. If I'm trying to live in my past and try to think about the sins of my past, I would be so discouraged and distraught this morning. I would not be fit to be up here talking to you, but I will fear no evil of the sins of my past. Why? Because I have put my sins in the trust of the Lord Jesus Christ. When he nailed them on the cross, he took them on my, off my shoulders and put them on his. Therefore, I will not allow the enemy, I will not allow the enemy to try to make me relieve my past. I will not allow the enemy to try to destroy me from my past. Why? Because I've put my trust in Christ. My sins are gone. But also, if you want to live your life and fear no evil, your purpose must be for Christ. You see, you know sitting here this morning if your purpose for living is for Christ or not. You know it. And the Spirit of God abides that abides in you, reminds you of it. Your life is not for me. Your life is for yourself. As I shared with the class this morning, the doctrine of Satan was I will. I will be God of my life. I will be God. I will sit in your seat, God. That doctrine has been passed on to us. And we say the same thing. I will be in control of my life, God. I will sit. I will be the God of my life. I will, I will sit in the seat of God for my life. Your purpose for me doesn't matter, God. I'm, I'm going to sit in that seat. I'm going to call the shots. And when you do those, my friend, there's plenty of evil for you to fear. Because you have now sat down in the lap of Satan. And now you are allowing him to control you. I will fear no evil this morning because, God, you are the purpose of my life. You are why I live. You are why. But I think upon you so much. You're why. You're the purpose of my life is because I want to fulfill your plan. Your purpose for my life is I, this morning that I be pleasing to you, God. That I give to this converse, congregation your, your word, Father. That I give them hope this morning. I will give them reason to believe that they do not have to fear evil, only fear evil itself, but trust in you, God. I have given him my sins. I have given him my purpose. I have given him my life, so I will fear no evil.
if death comes to me today, it's okay. Can you say that? Can you say that? If death comes to me, it's okay. God, I have finished my course. I have been faithful. I have fought the fight. I have walked in no fear of evil, but I have walked for you. If death comes to you, can you say that? If you had to lay down today and, and know that you weren't going to wake up in the morning, you say, preacher, you're, you're preaching things we don't want to hear. But my friends, they're reality. They're truths. They're life. How many will die today? And how many will have walked with God? How many will die today? Not fearing evil. Not fearing what is on the other side of death. Why? Because their life has been centered around Christ. And Christ has been everything. He said that the Lord is my shepherd. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He gives you peace in the midst of the battle. He gives you that peace and that comfort that you need when you have that assurance that you can trust Christ. Battle, people's battles, are, they're so great today. Their souls are in such turmoil. Let Jesus be your shepherd today and let him lead you to places where you can lie down with peace, where that you can sit down in comfort, knowing that you're in his care, knowing that you are trusting him. You see, when the battles get tough, that's when fear sets in. When the battle gets tough. He said in verse 3, he said, He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me aside uh, in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Do you know what fear does? Fear keeps us from reaching that table that God has prepared for us in the presence of our enemy. Fear holds us back. When the going gets rough and the battle gets tough in our life, then fear sets in. And, and we come to a point we can't, we can't reach that table that God has prepared for us. We come to that, that point where that all we do is fear life. All we do is, is, is we, we fear the battles. We dread getting up in the morning because with the battles that we're having to face. Some people dread to come to church because of the battles that they're going to have to face when they get there. Why? Because the Lord is not their shepherd. Let me tell you this. If the Lord is your shepherd this morning and you're allowing him to lead you in your day-to-day -day life, you sit here on the pews this morning, and you are, you're at peace. You have comfort in your soul. You're thankful. You're thankful for what God has done for you. You're thankful that God has led you to this place. You're thankful that God has led you to this time. You're thankful that God has led you to this moment when you can sit in peace. And he has brought you to the point that this morning you can worship him. You can simply say, God, you are my shepherd. You have brought me to this place of comfort. You have given me this place of peace. You have given me this joy in my heart. And God, no one could give me that but you. No one could forgive me by my sins but you. No one could place me where I'm at this morning but you. And dear God, I worship you. I praise you and I exalt you this morning. But can you do that? Can you do that? 
Can you honestly just lift up your hands and say, oh, God, thank you for who I am. Thank you for where you brought me. Thank you for allowing me to worship you this morning. God does not want us to come and struggle with worship this morning. God wants us to come clean, come with all the, our sins on the blood of Christ, He's led us to a place of repentance. He's led us to a place where the, we believe that our sins are forgiven and we can just be at peace with him. You see, I believe every time that you come this morning that God's prepared a table for you. Do you believe that God has brought you to this place this morning and he don't want to feed you? You think that God has brought you to this place this morning and he don't want to do something to help you, to encourage you, to help you get started in the right direction if you're going the wrong direction. Oh, yeah, God has prepared a table and he said, come and dine with me. He said, in Revelation 3.20, he said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And I believe it's some this morning. He's knocking. And he's saying, I'm standing at the door knocking. And behold, if you'll open the door, he said, I'll come in and I'll eat with you. And we'll, we'll eat from the same table. That's what God wants this morning, is for us to eat from the same table. The table of his blessings. The table of his grace. This morning, we can see the results of, of what is happening to our congregations. We, we can see the struggles of people. We can see today that material things brings no comfort. This morning, as you sit in the presence of Almighty God, it doesn't matter what you are. It doesn't matter what you've got. It doesn't matter how much money you've got in your wallet right now. The only thing that matters right now is your relationship with him. Are you sitting here fearful this morning? Are you sitting here saying, the Lord is my shepherd, I will not fear no evil. He's prepared a table before me. I'm not worried about nothing else, Lord, but just me and you. Just communing together. But you know what? Material things won't bring that. You can sit down in the most beautiful place that's ever been. And in the most comfort that's ever been. But if God is not there, it's a miserable place to sit. If God is not there, there's no comfort. And there's no joy and no peace. Oh, how important it is to realize that the riches of God is the only thing that can help us this morning. The riches that he wants to give to us. He has an abundance of riches that he wants to give us. And he said, if you'll just come to my table. And he said, the riches are on my table. And I'll bring you to that table if you'll just, just listen to me. Fear no evil. You don't have to feel evil when you walk in here. This morning, God wants to help us. Why will we not let him help us? You know, material things and money that don't comfort you. But did you know that even that person sitting beside you, whether it's a wife or whether it's a child, or whether it's a husband. If God is churning at your soul and the devil's fighting you, neither one of them can help you. That person sitting beside you cannot help you at all. There's only one source of help that can help you. And that is to accept Christ and push Satan out of your life. 
We look for help in so many places. We look for help in so many ways, and, and we find no help. But the shepherd can help us. And the shepherd desires to help us. This morning, I can tell you right now, there's no one cares any more for you than the shepherd. Whether, whether you are saved or lost this morning, if you're saved, let me tell you something. The shepherd wants to help you. But if you're lost this morning, he wants to become your shepherd. He wants to become the shepherd of your life. No one else can give you that. That person sitting beside of you can't give it to you. He can lean over or she can lean over and say, I'll pray for you. And they can put an arm on your shoulder. But it won't stop the shaking. It won't stop the turmoil. It won't stop the wrestling. It won't stop the struggling. It's still there. You see, there's some things in life that only God can help. There's some things in life that only God can fix. I will fear no evil because he has fixed them in my life. And he wants to fix them in your life also. He is an unseen enemy that's sitting in their pews today. An unseen enemy that's whispering, nudging, doing everything he can to deter you from Christ. Doing everything he can to stop you from your relationship with Jesus. Even if you're a Christian this morning, Satan cannot enter you, but he sure can influence you. Somehow I wish we could see, but then again I don't think I could handle it. But the battle that's going on inside the walls of this church this morning. You see, there's two conflicts going on. There's the Spirit of God. And there's the angels of God at work. And there is the spirit of Satan and the fallen angels at work. And they're working. They're working this congregation. It's kind of like a bunch of politicians. They're working to see who they can get to support them. You have every reason to fear this morning if you don't have Christ. Because that battle's raging. That battle's not going to get no better. It's only going to get worse. He's an unseen enemy that's working in our midst this morning. And you know what? You can see the results. You can know the results. This morning, if you're in a battle, and you... The, Shepherd is trying his best to woo you to his side. And you can get up and walk out of here. And Satan has done his due in here also. And you can get up and walk out of here. And you know what? When you walk through those doors, you'll know the results. You'll know the results of whether you followed God or whether you followed Satan. You'll know the results of the work of, of that's going on in this church today. When will he attack? He attacks all the time. He even attacks when you're asleep. He's a shrewd old rascal. But if you got Jesus, the shepherd, I will fear no evil. Do we understand that Satan hates God? And he hates everything that God stands for. 
and he wants to destroy everything God stands for. And that's why the battle is raging this morning. It's because we are standing for Christ this morning. We're standing to follow the shepherd this morning. And he wants to fight that so hard. And fear the evil that Satan can do to you this morning. But be thankful for the grace that God offers you this morning. To overcome his evil. That's why this morning I fear no evil. Because of God's grace. His grace enough to overcome. So this morning, we must turn to Christ. But I don't say turn to, just turn to Christ. But turn to Christ with assurance. Would all of you agree with me today? That the biggest problem in our local churches is believers that don't have any assurance of their relationship with Christ. That's the greatest fear that is in this place this morning. If every person here this morning would be honest, and if I were to ask you to raise your hand, if you doubted and you weren't sure, whether the Lord was your shepherd or not. You weren't assured that, that Christ was your Savior. If you didn't have, it, I'd say that there'd be no telling how many hands would go up and say, Preacher, I'm dealing with that. Then you're sitting here in fear. The worst fear that you can ever have is the fear of doubt. The fear of doubting in your relationship with Christ. It's the most damning fear. The most miserable fear. It was the worst fear of my life in the year that I went through. It was the worst time I've ever had in my life until I put it to rest. I got to a point I didn't even want to go to church, but I went anyway. But I didn't want to talk to nobody. How many of you are just like me? Why? Because you didn't have the assurance that Christ is your Savior and he is your shepherd. Do you have the Holy Spirit of God? Is there a witness of the Spirit of God this morning between us? Does your spirit bear witness this morning with my spirit that that is the man of God preaching to me? You see, the Bible says our spirits will bear witness of each other. Does your spirit say that that man preaching to me loves me and cares about my salvation? That cares about who my shepherd is? That cares about where I'm going to spend eternity? Or do you believe he's just a man standing behind a pulpit that's going to preach for a few minutes and go home? You see, if you see that in me, you don't see my heart. If you see that's all you see in me this morning, you don't see my, you, you're not witnessing the Holy Spirit of God. But if you see this morning, and the Spirit of God is saying he really cares, he's trying to tell you what I am giving to him that I want him to tell you, then I encourage you to find that assurance this morning. You say, hey, preacher, how did you find it? Can I tell you how I found it? I've told it before. But I found it right out here on 421. Just going under Windy Gap exit. Miller Mathis used to have a little store or something down here on the right. 
And I was going down through there in an old pickup, and I was crying. I cried a lot because I was so miserable. And I was going down the road there, and I said, well, I'll tell you what, God, I'm sick of this. And I said, I'm going to believe in you and believe in your word, and I'm going to, I'm going to trust your word, and if I die and go to hell, it's going to be your fault, not mine. And it left. I've never had it since. So what did I do? I made him my shepherd. I didn't get saved that day. I'd been saved. I knew that. But I had a loud fear of doubt to take over. But God took care of it that day. That was my way of dealing with it. He wants you to have that assurance to trust him. He wants to be strong when you're confronted with fear. When you're weak, he wants to be strong for you in your time of weakness. And when you sin, he wants to be your forgiveness. And he said, all you have to do is confess your sins. And he said, I'm just and able to forgive you. That's to a Christian. But for you that are lost this morning, he says, let me be your shepherd. Put your trust in me. Just give everything to me. And I'll help you to walk through life and fear no evil. Will you do that? Let's all stand.